Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Thank you for clicking on my video. I hope you're all doing well. And it's been a very long time since I've posted here. I'll get to that in a minute. First of all, I just want to make a quick note for anybody who's listening who's visually impaired. I'm a middle-aged woman with long curly brown hair and I'm wearing a white shirt with tiny blue flowers and the backdrop is the chaos of my living room. It's not worth getting into that. There's lots of cushions, toys, just chaos. So We'll ignore that and just continue on with the video. So as I was saying, it's been a long time since I've posted because I always try to keep a certain standard and film in the locations I think would like would be nice to have and um, just find time to make everything neat and tidy and edit the video afterwards. But then if I do that, I notice that just the months go by and I never get to do the things the way I want them to. So I just opted for an all natural look, as you can see, no makeup, the hair is everywhere. The living room is everywhere as well, but I really do still want to continue the conversation on booktube about books. So let's get into the video. This Today I would like to review a book by Salman Rushdie that's called Look and the Fire of Life. Um, my edition is from Random House and it's a short book that has 218 pages. So quickly before we get to the book review, I heard and I have Salman's Rushdie, sorry, Salman Rushdie's Midnight, Midnight's Children. I'm sorry, I'm not editing this out. I'm just going with the flow. So please bear with me. So um, Midnight's Children, I have it. I haven't read it. I'm kind of scared of it. I don't know why. I think I opened the first page and then I kind of shied away and always thought, oh, for Salman Rushdie, you definitely need lots of background knowledge about all kinds of stuff, politics and um, history and everything. So I shied away from this and it was always on my to-do or to, to be read list and I always felt bad about not having read anything by Salman Rushdie until I did a course on violence and terror in the university and we had to read Salman Rushdie's Shalimar the Clown. I can do a review on this book. It's definitely, definitely worth um, getting a hold of and reading it. It's uh, very, very exciting. So I'll do a separate book review on this. But once I did this, I read this book. You can see it's still got lots of little notes about uh, the topics on violence and terror, um, I realized that uh, you just have to jump into it. There's there's no need to be scared. I haven't read this Midnight's Children just simply because I haven't had time. But since I read this, I knew that, okay, it's accessible. I can do this. No fear with Salman Rushdie. So I went ahead and, no, I think my husband bought me this as a present. Um, the book I'm going to re be reviewing now, which is Luca and the Fire of Life. It's short, that's why I just read it straight away. I would recommend to read it in one sitting or as fast as you can because it can get a little bit complex even though it's short. I'm saying this because I started reading this about three times and then when I um, continued where I had left off, I had kind of lost the thread. So the thing, um, that's the negative thing, like not a negative thing, but a note you should say about the book. Just read it in one go or as fast as you can so you don't get lost um it's complex that's the one thing that's also very attractive and positive about this book and it's complex because it's got like different layers of meaning so as a reader you can read just uh like something like a fable or almost like a science fiction but as a more conscientious reader who's taking their time to think more about what's going on, it's uh, multi-layered. So you can also find like a deeper philosophical layer to it. Just basic questions about life and the meaning of life and death and why we're here. So if you take a second to um, review what's going on, you can find that there's lots of uh, of deeper meanings to the plot that's going on here and finally it's also entertaining and it's very fun to read because it's got like this layer of folklore and mythology and I'm sure um, you don't have to know much about those things but if you do have a background in those topics then it's also very exciting and it's funny and um, I'm sure I missed a lot of uh, 
references on or allusions, for example, in topics I don't know much about, like 1001 Nights. So fairy tales, folklore, mythology is also a layer that's interwoven into this book. And uh, overall, I you just get like a very uh, fuzzy sensation of well-being. I don't know. I, I didn't see it very negatively. I always thought it was kind of uplifting when it's got to do with the topics of life after death and um, missing family members. And I, I thought it was quite touching. And uh, it's a craft, I think, to weave all those topics together and still make it fun and still put in some science fiction and even video games. So if you like video games, you'll probably find this also entertaining and I think that's just uh, um, a genius way of writing that there's something in for everybody and like I said it's short so if you ever see it uh, please pick it up and um, yeah tell me if you've read it and if you've liked it so um, as I said if you're interested I can always do a review of this book and um, I'll just try whenever I can to sit down and just give a quick review of books and hope that you like it. All right. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.